<clears throat> so this is problem 26 from chapter 2. Uh, so this is our first Stokes theorem problem. So we're going to look at Stokes theorem real quick. So basically, we have a closed loop contour. So it's a DL. Um, so it can be a circle, square, whatever you want. And we want to figure out uh, how much our vector field is rotating it. So DL will have a direction. So if we look at our A, um, our A is in the direction that we chose for our DL here. It's neutral. Just imagine that these are perpendicular, so it's not causing any rotation here. And it's going against the direction of DL here. So we would basically break up this into four different a.dl's for all of the sides with the vector directions, and then um, integrate and sum all of those together to figure out that left side. The right side, um, this should look familiar to the divergence theorem. Uh, we have curl here, so del cross a for our curl, and then dotted with ds. So before we had a.ds to get our flux through a surface. So we're doing the same thing here, but we want to figure out the flux through the surface um, dependent on our curl. So that del cross a is the curl operation. So uh, del cross a gives us our um, del cross a vector because if we remember the cross product, put your fingers in the direction, um, your pinky finger aligned with this and sweep it to uh, a and the direction that our thumb is pointing in is the direction of the resultant vector. And then we're going to dot that with ds to figure out the magnitude of the flux through the surface that's dependent on curl. So just a little background. Okay, so let's look at what the problem is asking us to do here. So our shape here is a triangle. Uh, the book shows us the direction here uh, of that surface. And we're asked to find a dot dl around the triangular contour. Um, so the left-hand side of Stokes. And then um, we're going to find this uh, curl dot ds and that's going to be the right-hand side of Stokes. Should, so A should equal B here. And then we're also asked to answer a question here for C. So we're going to start with A. So, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do our A dot DL, and then we're going to do all of our pieces separately. So we have three pieces here, um, and we're going to solve for them and then add them together. Okay. So I just sort of pre-wrote this out here. So our DL, we have DX and DY. This is a 2D plane, so we only have changes in the x direction and changes in the y direction, and each of these lines are dependent on the change in x and the change in y here. Well, sort of, I guess this is only dependent on the change in x, and this is only dependent on the change in y. But we're going to go ahead and do our a.dl first, and then simplify and set things up here. So, okay, so our a is equal to 2x squared plus y squared uh, x hat, and then plus xy minus y squared in the y hat direction. So I've said this before, but these guys are the same. Uh, the book just uses a different notation. Okay, so, and then we're going to dot that with our dl here. So dot, so our dl, we just have changes in the x and the y direction for the shape that we're dealing with. So dx x hat plus dy y hat. And this would kind of be the same for any, um, uh, for a 2D shape that you're dealing with. Uh, like a square or a triangle, etc. Okay, so now we're going to dot them. So we're order of operations here. So we're going to start uh, these guys. Uh, and remember that uh, x hat dot x hat. So a unit vector, uh, directional unit vector dotted with itself is equal to one. X hat dot y hat because they are perpendicular uh, is equal to zero. Uh, this is true for all of these. So y hat dot y hat equals one, etc. I want you guys, oh sorry, equals one. I want you guys to get sick of hearing me say this. Um, I want it to be burned into your mind so you never forget to do it. Um, y squared. Uh, so hopefully you're getting sick of hearing me talking about it at this point. Okay, so for this first one, this is what we have for our first piece, right? This guy. And then we're going to notice that this multiplied, um, this piece multiplied. Uh, x hat dot y hat equals zero. So this whole piece will cancel. So we actually won't even need to bring that down. Okay, so let's do the top. Um, okay, so now we're going to multiply this guy. Oh, sorry. We just, we're going to do the second piece and we're going to multiply it by dx and then multiply it by this dy y hat. So we're going to notice that this first piece cancels, right? Because uh, x hat dot y hat equals zero for this 
first piece and then for the second one here y hat dot y hat equals one so we will keep it okay uh, so we end up with x y minus y squared uh, and then that's going to be dy okay so here is our a dot dl so next we need to break up our sides right and then approach those individually um, so let's go ahead and look at uh, our first side and I want our first side to be um, the Y side here so this is our vertical oh I label these differently I'm sorry so let's do let's go one and let's go two and then that one will be our third side so we're going to look at this one first uh, this is gonna be our side one so here our X is equal to zero right because we don't have anything in the X direction uh, so we just have a Y component so we have no DX right because there's no change in X it's just the Y axis that you see here so we're gonna set our DX equal to zero and we're gonna set our X equal to zero and then we're gonna solve for whatever we have left okay so side one okay so starting out, we know that x equals to 0 from the shape and dx equals 0, no change in x. And we have our a dot dl from up here, right? And then we're going to copy, uh, paste, and we're going to cancel out quite a lot of pieces here. I'm going to add an extra page. Okay. So, all right, so what do we got? What can we cancel out? Well, our dx is equal to zero, so this whole piece cancels out, and then our x is equal to zero, um, so that piece cancels out, so we're gonna end up with uh, negative y squared dy there. So negative y squared dy, uh, pretty simple. Um, so let's go 7d integral of this guy. Okay, so we need our bounds next. So y, so our direction matters for this, um, so we're going from, our bounds are going to go from 0 to 2, because 2 is our lower bound here. So lower bound to our upper bound for 0. So 2 to 0 here for y, because we're only integrating in the y direction. Um, and then we get, obviously, we negative y to the third over 3, and that's from... 0 to 2, and our answer uh, is going to be 8 thirds. So it's going to be like minus a negative here, right? Uh, 2 to the third over 3 equals 8 thirds for the first piece. Maybe a little. Actually, I have a little palette here. I just want to box our answer here. So 8 thirds for that first side. Okay, let's do the second one. Side two. Okay, so we're going to start with our a dot dl. Let's look at our side two and see if anything uh, drops out here. Okay, so for side two, uh, well, first off, first off, we notice that there is no dy, right? There's no vertical change. There's no dy, and y is equal to zero here. Um, so we're really going to only have the x and dx component. So dy is equal to zero. There's no change in y because this is just a line. Uh, on x, and then y is also equal to zero because there's literally no change in y. So we're going to go and look at our line and we're gonna set up that way. So side two, we have uh, y is equal to zero and dy is equal to zero. So let's cancel things out from our equation here, dot dl. Okay, and then we're going to go here. So our dy is equal to zero gonna go back to this guy here. I have to have my palette. No, I do not. Um, is that one darker? Okay, so our dy is equal to equals, equals zero, and our y equals zero, equals zero, right? So drop it out like this. Oh, and this, obviously this whole thing equals zero. Um, so we're just gonna end up with two x squared dx here with, after everything cancels. X. Um, okay, now we need our bounds for x. Um, so our bounds for x here, let's look at where we're going. So our bounds for x, well, they're going to go from 0, looking at the direction of our line, to 2. 
So zero at the bottom, two at the top of our balance here. So our range is going from zero to two. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and integrate here. So we'll end up with x to the third, or 2x to the third over 3. And then if we plug in our bounds, it's going to just turn into 2 times 2 uh, to the third over 3, which is going to give us uh, 16 thirds for our answer here. So 16 thirds. Okay, so that's for side 2. Now side 3 is where things get a little bit tricky. Um, so we're modeling things in terms of dx and dy. And we're going to kind of do a weird trick here um, because we really want to integrate only in terms of one uh, variable. Um, so we're going to set our y equal to uh, negative x plus 2. And then our dy, just taking it from this expression, is equal to negative dx. Okay, because we want everything in terms of one variable. So just so that when we integrate, we are actually um, doing it with respect to getting the change with respect to everything for the surface. So, or sorry, for the line here. So we're looking at here. So we're just treating this like a y equals mx plus b, right? So 2 is our y-intercept, right? So that's b. And then our slope is uh, minus 2 over 2. So that's 1. Or sorry, negative 1 here. So we have negative x plus 2. So that's, that's what gives us this y equals negative x plus 2. Just, this, just remember y equals mx plus b. Uh, and then we take the derivative of this, and that's how we get negative dx. Um, so we're going to sub that into our a dot dl to um, just integrate with respect to one variable. And that's how we're going to solve uh, for this last piece here. So let's see how that goes. OK, so we're going to grab, just looking for something to copy here for the sake of Not making the least excruciatingly long. Okay, so we have our a dot dl here, right? Okay, so we need to make some substitutions. We're going to sub out uh, y and we're going to sub out dy. Okay, so 2x squared plus, uh, what do we have for y? Uh, we're going to turn that into 2 minus x just because it looks a little cleaner, but it's negative x plus 2. So same thing, just, just rearranging the terms. Uh, dx, right? on both of these guys, and then uh, uh, plus, so just breaking up our, our integral here, uh, plus x times 2 minus x plus, uh, minus, this is going to just turn into some really ugly algebra here, so buckle up, uh, dy, okay. Oops, sorry, D and dy is subbed for negative dx, right? Yes, dy is equal to negative dx. Negative dx. Okay, let's see if we can group things here. So actually, I'm going to take out the second integral bound because we have everything in, term in this terms of the same uh, differential variable here. Okay, so we are going to, so 2x squared plus 2 minus x. Squared, and I'm going to distribute this negative here that we have, uh, and then we're going to end up with minus x, 2 minus x, plus 2x, oops, 2 minus x squared. So you can fast forward if you want to just kind of skip the math portion um, here or do it yourself. Uh, otherwise, you can hang with me while I group all of this together. If x squared minus x. Minus x. Okay, so, oops, still here. Okay, so what are our bounds now that we've kind of simplified this guy as much as we can here? Um, let's see. Well, actually, we're going to have to expand, aren't we? So let's actually expand this guy here. Mm, so we're going to end up with expanding before we integrate is going to be uh, essential here, plus uh, 8 minus 8x uh, plus 2x squared um, minus 2x plus x squared. Okay, so now let's group these guys. So we're going to end up with 5x squared minus 10x 
plus 8. Okay, so our bounds for this one, uh, we need to look at where our line is going. Okay, so we're starting, we are starting at 2, right? Look at our direction here, we got a little arrow. So for this last line, we're starting at 2, and we're going to 2. Um, but because we're looking at our bounds in terms of what, uh, we just have the x direction, right? Uh, so we just have x here. So we're going from x equals 2 to x equals 0 because we're, we're concerned with dx. So we're looking for the dx bound. So it's going from 2 to 0. Okay? So x goes 2 at the to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in down here. So 2 right at the bottom. And the, we end up we end up at zero, so that's like our our top bound that we're concerned with. Okay, so let's go ahead and integrate this guy. Uh, so we have five x to the third over three minus ten x squared over two plus eight x, and all of that from zero to two. Um, and then we're going to plug in our variables here. So zero, and then so it's going to be zeros for all of these and then minus some uh, top bound, minus bottom bound, right? So zero minus um, five times two cubed over three minus 10 two squared over two plus eight times two. Okay, so um, we're gonna end up with minus 40 over three uh, plus 20 minus 16, uh, which is going to give us uh, equals negative 28 over 3. Okay, so those are all of our pieces there. So we have 8 thirds, 16 thirds, and uh, minus 28 thirds. I kind of skipped a little bit here, but uh, plus 4. And 4 is going to turn into 12 thirds minus 40 over 3 plus 12 over 3. And that's why we get there, but just for the sake of, you know, time. Okay, so now we're going to add them all together, right? Side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3. Plus and, well, minus, I guess, for that last one, right? Okay, plus, so 1, 2, and 3. And our final solution here. 8, 16, minus 28, so 20 over, so we end up with minus 4 thirds for our answer. Okay, so that is side A, our problem A, part A. Okay, so our solution for part A is negative 4 thirds. So just to reiterate really quick, so what we did, step one, we did this A dot DL. And then we took our a dot dl uh, and we uh, solved for each of the sides separately. So we did side one at x equals zero and dx equals zero. We did side two at y equals zero and dy equals zero. And then we did side three. Um, and we converted uh, just to one differential operator. So everything was in terms of dx. Um, and then we simplified our problem, found our bounds uh, and found our solution. And then we added everything together. So for part A, A dot DL is equal to negative 4 thirds. Let's solve for part B and see if we can find negative 4 thirds for part B.